Okay, here we go. This is a first test uh, live stream here on editing playbook for creative video tips. What I'm going to show you today is kind of a workaround that basically it's it's for those instances when you have an assistant editor that needs to send out um, window burn time code for um, something that's going to get VFX work on it. It's for turnovers, right? So if you're familiar with DaVinci Resolve, you probably already know, if I take a look over here, that you can go up to Workspace, and then there's this thing called Data Burn-In. And then on the clip itself, you have this great option that's on here. You can see it's a burn-in source time code to your clips and record time code of what, what the what's on the timeline. The problem with it is that it is only listening to what's on the top clip. Like, if I want to get the time code for this clip that's underneath it here, guess what? It's not going to happen. So for composites, for VFX, that's just not going to work. So I could take this clip right here and I could crop, you know, the side of it off. But that cropping right there, it's still listening, still looking at the topmost clip. So if I match frame to this, you'll see the time code that 2165905 it's for the top clip so this is not useful at all this is not super helpful for when you need to send a window burnout for a composite so we've got two clips here imagine you needed the time code for both V2 and V1 i've got uh, two tips here i want to share with you and show you how you can work with this and and get the metadata across to the finishing house okay the first one is going to be just to put a marker on each clip Okay, MM is what I'm doing to put markers on them. And this is going to let us get a spreadsheet that we can send out with exact endpoint and outpoint from the source time code for each clip along with the clip name. Okay, so now that I have both of those um, marked, you can get that information by clicking on index, which is the edit index is what we're looking for. And then if you filter the edit index, okay, um, I'm going to get rid of this picture in picture so you can you can see the screen a little bit better if you filter the edit index down here we've got show markers and I'm just going to show only the markers right that are that are on here right and those are blue markers so I think I must have this filtered a little bit more uh, yeah I did I chose blue on accident so if I choose show all markers there we go so it's the two markers that we need to see we've got a um, uh, basically source record in and out is what we're looking for and now to get this out as a spreadsheet you can just simply right click on here to find this in the timeline find timeline and media pool and then from the timeline in the media pool you could also look at it in list view might make more sense you can right click timelines export and edit index okay so now that we have the edit index exported we can well, we will here as a as a CSV, a comma separated value document. We'll call this um, Penguin VFX. Okay. Now that that is is kicked out and uh, and and exported, we can open that with anything that opens a CSV. Okay. So I'm gonna just pull this over here, put it on a desktop like any good tutorial would, right? And then why don't we open this with numbers? Because I'm on a Mac. That's a default. You could use Google Sheets. You could use Excel. And you can see this has a source in, a source out, and it's got the name of the file name of the clip right there as well. Right? Really good information. You could send that off. That's your that's your uh, your metadata, right? Now, how do we get this as a window burn? That's the next question, right? Well, you're gonna do this with text plus. That's kind of the secret to this whole this whole trick. So if we close up our edit index, okay, and we open up our effects under titles, we have text plus, which is the fusion overlay here on uh, in DaVinci Resolve. So fusion text is text plus, regular text is edit page text. Text plus is way better, <laughs> it's way more powerful. And I'm going to show you why. You have time code modifiers, and we can apply an offset to it, okay? So here's how it's going to work we're going to have a text plus layer for each layer that's on here, and then any extra text plus layers you want. Maybe one for a file name, but just follow me. It's actually not that hard. We're going to be going to our first clip here and doing a match frame, okay? 
and that gives us our starting time code. That's an important number, and we need to actually convert that time code number into frames to apply an offset that we're gonna get to work with this title. You'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so if you don't know how to match frame something, the easiest way to find something whenever I say something that you're not sure about is to go to the help menu and search, and just search for match frame, okay? And I actually use match frame to source clip, but you can do timeline match frame right there. And what that does is it calls the exact frame up that's on the timeline up in the source monitor, okay? So now that I've matched that up there to the source clip, we've got that time code there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to text plus and we're gonna convert our custom title to, what do you guess? Time code, right? We'll choose time code and you'll see time code goes up from zero. Well, that's not super helpful, but here's where the modifier comes in. Something that we don't have on the edit page, but if we jump over into Fusion, we can fix this so that that first frame that we get right there is not 000. zero, zero. It's gonna be 9, 13, 54, 10. And the way we calculate that and get that into frames is by using a website. And the website that I found to be really, really handy is, let me open it up over here. Ah, so much stuff going on. Uh, this one right here is called AV Tools, right? Okay, I move this over to the side a little bit so you can see better. And the main thing is you need to make sure that your, your FPS, your frame rate, is set so that it matches the clip and the timeline. And then we're just gonna copy and paste the, the time code value in there. So match frame to there, open up my little cheat sheet, my little web calculator over here from um, avtools.io. I'm gonna put in 09, 1354, oops, 5410. And this gives me a frame number that's based, that's basically, that's our offset from the starting time code. So we're gonna copy that. And now to paste it into the text plus tool, all we need to do is we select that, we click this to open it in Fusion, that little Fusion button. We go to modifiers and we have start offset. Okay, start offset, we're gonna paste the value in there and boom. That's basically all we have to do to it, right? So now you can see this time code here is gonna match this bottom plate, 9, 13, 55, 17, 9, 13, 55, 17. Now here's another way you can check it. There's a three dot options menu up here and it's called show time code overlays. And if you look really closely right here, we have the same time code. So my hope is that DaVinci Resolve will eventually just put this time code overlay as an option with the main window burn option, but it didn't exist right now, so this is how you can get around using it. Now, to format this and make it look nicer, you can open Inspector, turn the size down, and then if you need to move it to a different area, you can click the uh, button right here for Fusion Overlay, and then you can actually click and drag, you know, move this wherever you want on the frame, as long as you grab that little center button. And uh, if you wanna put like a black background on it, that's easy to do too. You can click on shading, and then number four is a blue border. You can click enable on that. And no one wants a blue border, but that's just what they had preset. You can choose dark gray or something like that. And uh, yeah, <laughs> then you have you have a little bit of an option, a little flexibility to that, uh, to that background that's right there. Um, to get the time code for the next clip, I would just use option and shift which lets it constrain so you don't move it left to right. Um, but it just makes a copy of the exact same text from below. And then in this instance, you can just use this overlay to move it up. And then you kind of rinse and repeat. You, you're gonna basically, you go to the first frame here, you'll do a match frame to get that starting time code value. It's 2.16.59.05. You know, you would punch that in over here. We got 2.16. 5905, and we figure out what the frame value is for that, which is 197,000 something. Then you can back over here to text plus, the little fusion overlay, and we're gonna change our start offset on this one to that value we took from the time code calculator. And now you can see we have source time code overlay burns <laughs> on both of these and they should match. So 217.0019, they match, they're dead on, right? So. This is, uh, unfortunately, this is how you have to work to get burned in time code 
for multiple VFX plates. But that's what I got. <laughs> that's all I got. I think that's all you can do here in Resolve. I, Avid probably has a better way of doing this that you don't have to copy and paste from my calculator. And maybe one day they'll be able to take these overlays here and just make that built into the other uh, burn-in effect. That would be super awesome if you're listening, Blackmagic. But, um, yeah, that's what I got. Uh, thanks so much for watching. This is the first stream here on Editing Playbook um, YouTube channel. Also, EditingPlaybook.com. But, honestly, it's just practice so that I can get better at live streaming for creative video tips.